Dexter was giving out double head this episode, but I think it's fair to say that Lila enjoyed it a hell of a lot more than Sergeant Dulks. Welcome back, guys, to Fog Entertainment. It is Season 2, Episode 7, That Night. A forest grew, and the forest is beginning to grow in the Miami Metro Department regarding the Bay Harbor Butcher, thanks to a 32-page manifesto that Dexter sent in. So, yeah, we're into the second half now of Season 2. Arguably, I think one of the better halves, if not the best halves of Dexter, when you can look at all the seasons and you split them into half seasons, I think the second half of season two is definitely one of the strongest, probably up there with season one and season four. And uh, yeah, a lot of things are beginning to heat up now. Uh, Dexter tried his best to get the entire department off his ass, especially Agent Lundy, but all he really did here was have Lundy manage to narrow down that the Bay Harbor Butcher is someone from the Miami department. So yeah, is Dexter's time running out? Is he going to be revealed as the killer, as the butcher? I guess we'll find out more as we get through the episode. But we start with Dexter and Lila. They are now officially a couple, I guess. Rita is out, Lila is in. And yeah, Lila, I think she's a better fit for Dexter at this point. And I mean, even Dexter now, he beget, he looks like he's enjoying sex, whereas with Rita, it was always something that was awkward and he never really wanted. And he had to kind of just do it to fit in and be normal. But with Lila, it seems like he's actually interested and enjoying it. So I, I just think they're a better dynamic, the two of them together. He can be himself around Lila, right? See her in Rita. He has to hide. He, you know, he has to, he has to be big. No, wait, see with Rita, he's Harry Morgan. See with Lila, he's big fucking Dexter himself, isn't he? That's the difference. He's John Cena with Rita. And see with, see with the other one, he's Doctor of Fuckingomics. He knows what he is. He knows what he's doing. And I actually prefer him with Rita, because I think he's more like the OG Dexter. With Lila, I think he's completely unhinged. But hey, character development. Yes, Dexter's character is developing, but that's basically because he's allowed to be himself around Lila, unlike Rita. Therefore, he is a new character altogether. And this is probably the most open he's ever been with an individual other than Harry. Since Harry passed away, he's not really had anybody to confide in. He's had to put on a fake persona every time he leaves his apartment. But with Lila, he can pretty much be himself without outright saying that, you know, I'm a guy that loves to kill people. He just, he uses the analogy of him being a user and he just replaces killing with drug addiction, but he's pretty much open to Lila apart from the fact that he hasn't admitted that he is the Babe Harbor Butcher. Yeah, but using the moniker of I'm an addict, he could do the same with it to a degree. No, I think so. No? Is that the question? I understand why he can be himself more with Lila, but if he was ever going to come out to Rita about this, would this not have been the perfect time with the analogy of that? No? I don't think Rita would understand. No, she probably wouldn't like, but here. Speaking of Rita, she's not getting up, she's being grumpy, she can't really get over the breakup. Gail comes in, tells her to stop moping, you have to get over Dexter, so it's the third time you've overslept this week, but I think Rita's had enough of Gail, and I mean, I don't think Gail being in the house is going to help her get over Dexter I'd anytime soon. I Gail's in the house. Point is, Gail sucks and Rita needs to get all the hell out of there. But we move back over to Dexter's apartment and Deborah is grilling Dex about his breakup with Rita. She assures him that it's only temporary and don't worry, you guys are lifers. You'll be getting back together soon. And I mean, this all stemmed from Deborah making fun of Rita, saying about what noises does Rita make during sex. And then Dex is like, well, she ain't going to make any noises anymore. Not because I've killed her or anything, but because we're broken up. And Deborah just didn't really want to accept that Dexter and Rita might no longer be together. So, right, what we see, are it's they the life focal of seen Deborah though be about Rita? You never really seem like the relationship was that strong. See that time they got called over? Oh, yo, can you cover for me, Deborah? 
Oh, and then she punched the guy at the bar. You never thought like she was fucking pro Rita. Well, it's fair to say that she is in the Rita camp now. But we head back to the Miami Metro Department, and there has been a 32-page manifesto sent in, and Special Agent Lundy is going over it with a fine tooth comb. He's looking at every little detail in this 32-page manifesto, as is Angel Batista, as is. Masuka and as is a bunch of other people who we don't really have the names of right now but the point is everyone is going over this manifesto that Dexter has sent in to try and get the special task force off his case and he's trying to send it into chaos by putting in so many different quotes and stories from just different authors, political figures, historic events, basically everything that has ever happened, Dexter was including quotes and references from all these different things to try and throw everybody off their game. And you know what? It was kind of working because everyone was arguing nobody could agree until Lundy went, you know what? This is what he wants. He wants us arguing. He wants us disagreeing. He wants us not working together as a team. And Frank Lundy then deducts that the killer is in fact a member of law enforcement because that is what someone from law enforcement would do. They would try and confuse the special task force and try and split and defied opinion so that they couldn't track him down. So yeah, Frank Lundy just seems to be one step ahead here of everybody else in the department. And I guess that makes sense why they brought this guy in in the first place to solve this case. A killer's never escaped good old Frank Lundy. I think Dexter, I think Dexter fucked up here. I'm sorry. I think he should not. He tried to do it smart, the smartest man. Yeah, not very smart, is it? No, he's uh, Lundy's going to laugh at him here. Honestly, I don't, I don't see what was the need. Really? To be honest with Dexter for doing this? Well, he, he was trying to throw everybody off, but all he did was really have Frank Lundy narrow down who the suspect is. So, yeah, Dexter is just digging his hole deeper, deeper and deeper. We go to a crime scene where some stepdaughter has been bludgeoned to death. Dox is there. Obviously, he's not happy. He's, he's never happy, especially when there's someone dead lying in front of him. Dexter is at the crime scene. He gives Dokes some of the information, but he then lies to Dokes and he points the blame of the murder at the ste stepfather of the daughter. So he tells Dokes that the blood spray on the stepfather's shirt could be from bludgeoning, when in reality he knows that it's not. Dokes then presses this guy hard. And he takes him in, he has him arrested, he takes him down to the department, he's grilling him, he's grilling him, he's grilling him, he's trying to get the truth, he is putting this guy through hell and blaming him on the death of his stepdaughter. However, by this time, Dexter has already put the truth on Dokes' desk underneath a pile of other files. Dokes doesn't see it. And then Dexter says to LaGuerta, why is Dokes still questioning this innocent man? And he reveals that the blood work suggests that this guy did not bludgeon his stepdaughter and in fact that he was trying to help her, he was trying to stop the bleeding. So Dexter has just played Dokes like an absolute fiddle here. He's played him like a flute and Dokes has played every single tune that Dexter wanted. Problem is, Dexter, Dokes did not think Dexter was pl would play this dirty. He would not think that Dexter would lie to him like this in work. That would affect, can't affect all of them, but mostly Dokes. And Dokes probably should see something like this coming. Well, it's the effect indirectly def affected Dokes. Yeah, but it's affected Dexter as well to a degree. How? Well, how? Dexter's, Dexter's looking fine here. No, but if, Do if Dokes doesn't lose his cool, and maybe he could have seen through it, which he did, but then LaGuerta doesn't believe him because of previous history with him. So how does Dexter look bad? No, I'm saying he could have looked bad. That's what I'm saying. It could have, it could have backfired like a few things that he's done this season, but and, it didn't. Anyway, Dokes is raging and he, he will get his revenge, I'm sure, on Dexter. Uh, Camilla Fig then alerts Dexter that Dokes has been asking questions about Dexter's past and he's been asking for the same files that Dexter was asking for back in Season 1 uh, regarding the shipping yard massacre that Harry... Morgan told her not to give out to anybody and she's afraid that she could lose her job, she's going to retire in a year and she thinks that Dokes will find out sooner rather than later that she is withholding these files from him. But Dexter says, don't worry about it, I will 
I will take care of it. I will sort out everything. We have Dexter and Lila. They go for dinner. Lila is such a good liar. It just comes straight off the tongue. She makes up some crazy story about how she reserved this um, seat for like two months ago and it's their 10 year anniversary when in reality two months ago they hadn't even met each other. So yeah, that compulsive liar here and it just proves that when you copy a sob story like this at these restaurants and get away with murder. Yeah, but I think you need to say it with confidence, otherwise you're, you're probably just going to get told, sorry, not tonight. We see that Dexter is back in his apartment with Lila. Deborah's in the middle of the night looking for some orange juice because she likes to drink it straight from the carton. But the fridge opens and she sees Lila there. Lila's naked. Lila says, oops, sorry, pardon my tits. Pretty good quote. Deborah's like, who the fuck are you? She goes in to confront Dexter. She says to Dexter, who's the skank? And then when she looks around and she sees all the candles and all the flames, she asks Dexter, are you trying to fuck her or set her on fire? And I like Deborah's wit. I like Deborah's banter here. She's very quick and she fires. And I, I, I think Deborah's a good character. No, she is a good character, but I think she's a wee bit hypocritical with Dexter that's doing with Lila, considering what she just seems to sleep around a lot. Yeah, Dexter's not one for just sleeping around with random people, yet she seems to have a new boyfriend every single week. Well, he so. clearly stated earlier in the episode that him and Rita's done. And Ra Rita broke up with him. Yeah. So I don't quite know why Deborah's so annoyed, but we can definitely see here that she is a fan of Rita and she thinks that Deborah and Rita are Rita. supposed to be together. Deborah then breaks up with Gabrielle, and I, I think we could see this coming. Just this character, Gabrielle, is. He did nothing Cookie for cutter, me. bland, boring as fuck. Yeah, honestly. I'm not even surprised Deborah broke up with him. No, I'm. They take Frank Lundy out of the equation. I think she still would have broke I'm up with him. I'm shocked it's last seven episodes. Yeah, just a, just a, a nothing character. He's like, I'd probably give him like a, a three or a ten. Yeah, and then that's <laughs> being generous, I think. But he, he could literally turn up on one of Dexter's kill tables in like three seasons' time, and I wouldn't even remember who he is. Yeah, Deborah then goes out to have lunch with Lundy on the water because guess what, guys? It is one o'clock and she gives Lundy a kiss and now it looks like Deborah and Lundy are an item. So hold on, it. right? Obviously, I'm not. I'm, obviously, she's not sleeping with Lundy at this point yet. But it's like you're just like have, you had to go with Dexter for Lila, and then here you are, like three seconds later, broke up with Gabriel and kissing Lundy. Yeah, I don't, don't really understand that. I, I would say Lundy's a wee bit more respectable though than Lila, but he is like 30 years older than you, so reel it in. Yeah, it's, it's like kissing Harry Morgan at the end of the day. Rita finally does something good. She stands up to her mother and gets her the hell out of the house, so that is Gail gone. Gail is out of here. Gail's finished. You lied finished. about your job. You were fired, you lying old bastard. Uh, Dexter arrives at work. He goes into his office and Dokes is waiting for him. Dokes is like, it's about time you fought back, you creepy little bastard. Uh, Dexter now realises that Dokes is on his tail and he's not going to give up. He doesn't believe the whole drug addict, I'm a, I'm a user story like airline anymore he don't but see I think the problem with that is I think he did believe that to a degree but then once he finds out it's a load of shit for you like Deborah and things then that's what leads the lie on see once you tell a lie it snowballs out of control unless you can contain it to a certain level of people Doak says that there is no history on what happened with Dexter's uh, early past in his early days and he says it's all a big mystery there's no paper trail on the early years of a young Dexter Dexter is not phased though and he tells Dokes that it doesn't matter no matter what you try no matter when no matter how hard you work I'll always be a step ahead of you for one simple reason and Dokes is like well what's that and Dexter then tells Dokes, I own you. Then he headbutts Dokes uh, and just bolts out the office here. So Dexter, one headbutt, and then it's like a one-hit kill, and then Dexter straight out the, the door. Doesn't want to get in a, a fight, doesn't want to get in a, a fist fight with Dokes. And I'm not sure how a fist fight would go, to be honest, but Dexter knows what he's doing. He's hit Dokes in private, and then he makes sure he gets out into public for when Dokes retaliates and then we see Doc Dexter just casually strolling out of his office down the hallway and Dokes comes up from behind and he grabs Dexter, tackles him to the ground, Dexter bangs his head off a desk and I mean in another show if you're if you're a red shot this could have been a kill. It could have been. 
I mean, Dexter's head just bangs off the edge of the table. Dokes then goes into a couple of punches. The punches for Dokes didn't look that, uh, they didn't look great to be fair. No, it was. It wasn't the strongest looking punches, to be honest. Body Played him like a fiddle here, yeah, again. Body shots, and then we see a big uh, Angel Batista. He was first in there to try and get Dokes off of Dexter. And I, I guess what Dexter said moments ago could be true. He does own Sergeant Dokes at this moment. I mean, Dokes is the one doing the chasing. But Dexter's the one in front. Yeah, I mean, that. Hey, play, uh, Dokes, come on. Should have seen through this, man. Although, how would most people react to getting headbutt? That's, that's what you got to bear in mind. And uh, bear in mind as well, he's a fucking hothead, Dokes. Yeah, uh, finally, we end the episode with Dexter attending one of Cody's school events at Bayside Elementary School, where he's done a project on Saudi Arabia. Uh, he thought it was Israel, but Dexter said he promised he wouldn't tell the Saudis that. Uh, I don't think the Saudis would appreciate Cody. Nope. If uh, he uh, compared them to I think, Israel. I think Cody would probably lose about six inches off the top. But uh, Lila obviously was not happy about this. And after selling a piece of her artwork for £14,000, she decides that she doesn't give a shit about the money and that she wants to win Dexter back. Even though he, she hasn't lost him, She's just completely jealous that he is deciding to spend any time away from her with uh, Cody, someone that he views as possibly a stepkid. And she ends up burning down her loft and claiming that this fire started as an accident in order to try and get Dexter's attention. And Dexter then leaves Rita with the kids after saying he would get ice cream with them and he rushes back to be with Lila and that's how the episode ends so that was it episode 7 season 2 that night a forest grew and I mean we we were led to believe that Lila was a little bit unhinged we knew that she wasn't exactly normal definitely had a little bit of craziness inside her but um, if we weren't exactly sure how crazy I think we, we know by the end of this episode that it's pretty much batshit yeah, it's crazy, man. They would they throw 15 grand in the drains. If, honestly. 14. 14, 15, 14. But yeah, like I said a few episodes ago. Hold on, I'm thinking more along the lines that she's willing to burn down her fucking entire place just to get Dexter to come True, over. True, but if she, at least with the insurance, that was a decent plan B, even if it didn't go according to plan. But it's funny because Dexter's kind of morphed into, like, Paul. Seeing the kids and the, the, the whole junkie thing. And Rhea points this out, actually, in the next episode. He's like a Poundland Paul, Dexter. Mine is probably the domestic abuse and all that stuff, but yeah, like I said a few episodes ago, I, I said I called Lila a cunt, I retracted it, I think I might need to, uh, what's the opposite of retract? Tra issue. Issue. Issue again. C-U-N-T. But, uh... Anyway, what rating are you going to issue? I'm going to issue. A big issue. I'm going to get an 8. I enjoyed this episode. I like the confrontation between Dokes and Dexter. I'm intrigued to see where that goes. Um, Dokes, is Dokes going to get the last laugh? I doubt it. I think his Malteser dome's going to explode in a million fucking pieces. Well, <laughs> I thought when Dexter headbutted him. Well, no, but what happens though? Not De far wrong there, buddy. <laughs> what, what happens if Dexter... Um, what happens if Dexter headbutted him and Dokes, like, like his nose just splattered? And then he went and told on Dexter to look where Cried like a little bitch. I wonder what it, he's just not. That's just, just not Dokes. That's not the Dokes character. No. <laughs> anyway, guys, I'm also going to give it an eight. Good episode. Uh, like I said, I do believe that the second half of season two is the strongest that Dexter gets, and um, yeah, I think it's one of the. I'd say it's one of the best halves of any television show season that I've ever seen. So yeah, looking forward to reviewing the rest of the episodes on Fog Entertainment and of course there will be lots of Fairy Feds mixed in there as well. So that's it. 8 out of 10 guys. Catch you in the next one. Till then. Peace.